Special forces is an umbrella term for distinct and specially selected trained and equipped military units which employ unconventional tactics. A defense organization may sustain multiple special forces and each special force may sustain multiple subunits, each further specified in themselves. Special forces have existed for as long as warfare has, though special forces as we perceive them today gained traction in the Second World War. Following the war, with the effectiveness of modern special forces proven, almost every country mustered some form of a modern special force. In this video, however, we're going to summarize a couple of German, British and American special forces which operated in World War II. The Germans actually employed quite a few special forces units throughout the war, though we're going to look at just two of those units, the Brandenburgers and the SS Jäger Battalion 502. Inspired by the use of the sadistic yet effective Freikorps Ebinghaus in the invasion of Poland, Theodor von Hippel conceived the idea of a German unit versed in sabotage and infiltration for future operations like the war Hitler had just dragged the world into. By January 1940, many members of the Freikorps Ebinghaus were redesignated under Bauler Compagnie 800, known as the Brandenburgers. In its early years, the unit primarily accepted foreign German nationals fluent in foreign languages. Their training went beyond that of conventional infantry to include recon, hand-to-hand -hand combat, marksmanship with German and enemy guns, swimming, and more. Out in the field, the Brandenburgers' aims of sabotage and infiltration could be extrapolated to messing with enemy communication and command by disrupting their comms, issuing countermand and redirecting convoys, mixing with enemy soldiers, and generally just gathering intel. The Brandenburgers operated in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, though what one of their subunits did in August 1942 epitomizes what the unit was all about. Led by Brandenburger and Waffen-SS officer Adrian von Völkersam, the unit dressed up as Soviet NKVD operatives and drove deep into the USSR in Soviet trucks, right through their front lines. En route to the Mykop oil fields, which they were to capture, they bumped into a formation of Soviet soldiers fleeing the front and, instead of freaking out, convinced the Soviets to rejoin the war and then tagged along at their side, granting them unchecked movement throughout much of the USSR. Another German Special Forces unit, Sonderlehrgang Oranienburg, was activated by SS Obergruppenführer Hans Jüttner early in 1942, though by November 1943, it fell under the command of Scarfaced Otto Skorzeny and was renamed the 502nd SS Jäger Battalion. The 502nd was made up of volunteers from the Luftwaffe and here and also the Waffen SS and was considered a rival to the Brandenburgers. While the 502nd got up to a whole lot more, 16 of its members were involved in the infamous Grand Sasso Raid of September 1943, in which they successfully broke Benito Mussolini out of the hotel he was being held prisoner in. Under the Fallschirmjäger Division, which can be considered a special force in itself, the 502nd descended on the mountain-bound hotel and its single railway station in gliders and raided it with up to 100 men, overwhelming twice as many guards without firing a single round and freeing the bald fascist in just 10 minutes. Scorzani was ultimately promoted and awarded for this daring rescue. While Britain may have inspired other nations to establish special forces, it didn't invent special forces, despite the prominence of the British commandos and SAS. First formed as the Special Service Brigade, the British commandos were an initiative of Churchill, who was after a small but hard-hitting force with which Britain could raid German-occupied Europe. British soldiers who volunteered for the commandos underwent intense training regimes, testing physical and mental fitness, as well as a soldier's ability to perform under live fire. 
Specific exercises included climbing and full gear hikes over mountains and through rivers, hand-to-hand -hand combat, marksmanship, boats and canoe handling, zip lining. All right, let's hear you say zip line! Zip line. Map reading and more. British commandos were generally issued lighter weapons than standard soldiers, making use of SMGs like the Sten and the Thompson, pistols often silenced, and yes, the legendary Feb and Sykes fighting knife. The commandos served in every theater, disrupting Axis operations and paving the way for Allied offensives, though their operation codenamed Chariot has been hailed as the greatest raid of all time. Basically, the Germans were holding a French dry dock at Saint-Nazaire and using it to repair their larger warships. So, in March 1942, the commandos decided to take an old US-built Navy destroyer and ram her into the dock gates loaded with delayed action explosives, which, as the name suggests, detonated later that day, rendering the dock almost useless until 1948. Before the bombs went off, 611 commandos spread into the dock and destroyed as much infrastructure as they could, killing 360 Germans and taking 385 casualties themselves. While the commando's success varied, it inspired the formation of many other special forces, including the Special Air Service, or SAS. The SAS was founded in 1941 by monobrowed Sir Archibald David Sterling for recon and sabotage operations and raids. The unit was initially meant to operate behind enemy lines in the North African campaign, though it went on to operate all through Europe, with Operation Archway being one of the force's most ambitious operations in the war. Following the Normandy landings, the SAS had their fingers in pies all through German-occupied Europe, and in Operation Archway, two reinforced SAS squadrons supported the 18th Airborne Corps' parachute landing across the Rhine River, spearheading the operation in jeep formations and crossing the Rhine in amphibious LVT buffaloes. They then went on to support armoured units elsewhere in Germany, using the speed of their jeeps to their advantage. In one of such operations, the 1st SAS Squadron, supporting the 11th Armoured Division, liberated up to 60,000 prisoners from the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp and hunted down the fleeing Nazis. One such nation inspired by the Brits' use of special forces was the US, which mustered many special units throughout the war with varying success. The Marine Raiders, for instance, was a bit of a flop, whereas the first Special Service Force was quite successful and straight up cool. Similarly to the US Army Rangers, the Marine Raiders were conceived as the US counterpart to the British Commandos, and the 1st and 2nd Raider Battalions were activated in February 1942, when amphibious raids on Japanese-held islands were in their infancy. The Raiders recruited only the best standard marine volunteers and these men were equipped with the very best gear. They received extra training, specializing in rubber boat landings and guerrilla warfare, though overall, they were employed in many of the same operations as standard marines, who were already considered an elite force, and this ultimately created tension that led to the abandonment of the Raiders in early 1944. The Raiders achieved a massive victory over the Japanese in the Battle of Edson's Ridge, Guadalcanal in September 1942, basically taking the brunt of a 6,000 man assault with inferior numbers and coming out on top. Though these types of operations weren't really what the Raiders were created for. Their raid on Mackin Island in August 1942 was their type of operation, though it ended up being a costly mess. Basically, the raiders used inflatable rubber boats to land on the Japanese-held island of Makin, the Gilbert Islands, where they were tasked with destroying installations, taking prisoners, gaining intel, and distracting the Japanese from other allied landings. Though, in reality, they ended up killing most of their would-be prisoners, gathering no useful intel, and leaving some of their men, who were murdered by the Japanese, behind in a disastrous evacuation. Now, the first special service force was liquidated before the end of the war in December 1944, though it is an especially interesting unit as it was made up of both Americans and Canadians, trained to operate behind enemy lines in winter conditions and mountainous terrain specifically. 
The idea for such a force was proposed by the English inventor of the unorthodox, Geoffrey Pike, who intended for the force to operate in German-occupied Norway, taking out strategic targets like hydroelectric power plants, though this never eventuated and the first was employed elsewhere. The unit was trained in demolitions, parachuting, rock climbing and skiing and taught how to survive the cold, and they were also afforded all sorts of non-standard equipment, including winter clothing and special rations. The unit operated in Italy, including the Battle of Anzio, in which it replaced the Ranger battalions that were decimated in Cisterna and also in France, though the unit's skills were employed to their fullest in the battles of Monti la Defensa and Monti la Remettinia. As these positions were some of the last on the winter line, the Germans had fortified them heavily. Their artillery had so far been rebounding conventional allied offensives, though the first special service force was anything but conventional, and they scaled the treacherous mountains, toiling through the freezing rain to claim a position above the German stronghold at Monti la Defensa. Even with the jump, an intense two-hour battle ensued, and many Americans and Canadians lost their lives, though their daring assault forced the enemy to retreat to La Ramontagne, which the Allies captured thereafter. For these and other exploits, the first special service force earned the title the Devil's Brigade. Overall, it's really difficult to pit these special forces against each other and decide which was the most effective in World War II, as each unit had its own speciality. The British employed special forces early in the war, so it's fair to say they were the more experienced allied nation, though the Germans had been using special forces before the war even started, and the feats of such units, although they were on the losing side, so to speak, are nothing to scoff over either. As for the Marine Raiders, they were a great example of a special force which wasn't specialized enough, which, let me be clear, is not the same as saying they were poor soldiers by any stretch of the imagination. Though, as per usual guys, we want to know what you think in the comments. Are any of the special forces we covered today clearly better than the others? Worse? What about the forces we didn't include? What about the forces of other participating nations? Would you like to see a second or even third part to this video? Let us know in the comment section below. And just before you go guys, make sure you check out the description where you can join our wider community on the Discord server where you can chat with other history buffs. And if you want to support the channel more than you already are by watching this video, please do check out the Patreon. If you do decide to donate, you get access to a super secret behind the scenes Discord where you can see how myself and the team work. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.